What's the worst customer you've had in the food industry? When I worked at Dairy Queen, we had someone pull up at the drive through 2 minutes before close. The person's ordered us about $50 worth of food from the brazier, kitchen, in addition to about $25 worth of ice cream products. As the car pulls around to pay, it's one of the employees drunk off his butt thinking this is all a big joke. Of course, he didn't decide to tell all of us working that it was a joke. So, my nice clean kitchen was cooking up burgers, fries and just about everything and I end up throwing it away. Thankfully, the idiot was fired the next day. You should have taken his keys away and called the cops since he was driving drunk. You know, as a joke. I worked at a soup and sandwich cafe for 3 years while I was an undergrad. Good job, easy money. Anyways, we offered quick breakfast options bagels and cream cheese, breakfast sandwiches and burritos, and a quick 2 egg breakfast with toast, hash browns or grits, etc. We offered a $1 small cup of coffee because Starbucks was 2 blocks down and my manager was like that. We broke even on the coffee, not really hoping to profit, just trying to get people in the door and serve quick, good food, that kind of place. A super yoga soccer mom started coming in every morning to buy a coffee. She would bring in her own bagel and her own cream cheese. She would purchase the coffee and then ask us to toast her bagel and put her cream cheese on it for her and expect us to run the food out to her like we did for every other paying customer. While she was purchasing her coffee, she would ask that we put on new gloves while preparing her food. Okay, fine, not a big deal the first few times because the owner, a working manager, was trying to keep his customers happy all of the time. However, this budding new cafe was starting to increase in business, exponentially. This bagel lady started coming in every single day. The boss grew a little tired of her request because after all, he isn't seeing the benefit of selling her a $1 cup of coffee and having us prepare her food for her. She didn't tip either however, because my boss always lived by the customer is always right method. He did this. She came in on a Saturday morning once thinking she got special treatment because she was a regular customer. She decided she would skip the line and put her bagel on the counter near the register. She waited in line, purchased her $1 coffee and noticed her bagel was right where she left it, untouched. Excuse me, I expected this to be toasted and ready when I purchased my coffee. I come in all of the time, you should know me by now. I am one of your most frequent customers. Yes ma'am. I apologize, I did not see it, here is your coffee and I will bring it out to you in a moment. I just don't understand you people sometimes so incompetent and rude to your customers. This is the kind of behavior that leads to disease and sickness in restaurants. I didn't realize my boss was standing over my shoulder during this encounter. He sort of pushes me out of the way grabs her bagel, ungloved hands takes a bite, goes to hand it to her, drops it and asks her to leave with a mouthful of bagel. He goes to his office and closes his door still chewing the bagel. He comes out and says coffee is now $2. Problem solved. There's a lot of stories in here of crappy customer behavior, but for some reason this lady pisses me off the most. I think it's her pure, unabashed abuse of the owner's attempts to accommodate her. I once had a family of four come in, a wife, husband and two kids, the wife ordered a cheeseburger. Everything seemed to be going well. I asked if they liked their food and if there was anything I could get for them. They said everything was fine. The wife finished her burger and got my manager. She told her that the burger was absolutely horrible and wanted a refund for the whole meal. My manager almost laughed at her and told her if she hadn't finished the burger and had said something at the beginning she would have gladly gotten her another burger but there was no way she was getting a meal for four for free nor was she getting hers for free because she, at first, told me she liked it. When I used to work at McDonald's some lady came in and ordered a cheeseburger without cheese. So being the person I am I just put it in a hamburger wrapper and gave it to the front. Well she came back like 5 minutes later and all heck broke loose. She was yelling at the poor girl who gave her the sandwich and the girl was new. So I went up to help and asked what was the matter. This is what she said I ordered a cheeseburger without cheese you gave me a hamburger I want what I ordered right now and I want to speak to your manager. So I told her I was the manager. She proceeded to call me a lair even though I had a name tag that said shift manager on it. But I told her I would fix it. I took the burger and put it in a cheeseburger wrapper and gave it back to her she looked at it. 
then at me and I'm pretty sure she had the realization of what a cheeseburger without cheese is. She then just walked away without thanking me or anything. Also, I sent the girl home since she was crying. Used to be a cashier in a theme park. Prices were quite high, but then again, you're at a theme park. A woman and her four children come into my line with $80 worth of theme park food. When I announce the total, she accuses me of lying about the prices and says I must be trying to scam her. Demands I avoid her order and ring up each person separately so I don't scam her. I do so. Again accused of trying to scam her so I rotate my register to her field of view and show her line by line how much everything costs. At this point, she drops all the food in my line, tells me to deal with the mess as it's my problem now, and walks out. This one guy, we'll call him John, was a regular at a restaurant I worked at. He would always ask for recommendations and no matter what you suggested, John would tell you he had that last week and it sucked. He would take up as much time as possible no matter how busy the restaurant was. He had a wife who would jokingly tell him to knock it off but she would laugh so it would just encourage him to be a jerk. Then after bringing the food to them, he would ask me to box it up so they could take it home. But they would occasionally leave a tip. Years later, I was a brand new nurse and my co-worker had gotten a tray of food thrown at her by a patient. John was the patient. 7 top. Table gets excellent service. $140 bill or so. Person paying check is friendly and all smiles. Tip $0. Waits at the door to see the sad dejected look on the waitress's face as she looks at the receipt and gives a Hannibal Lecter smile. You could just tell he derived pleasure from her pain. Also. People who request lots of coffee creamers, open them all and turn them upside down on the table so they are impossible to remove without making a mess. While I worked in an all-you-can-eat restaurant we frequently got customers who would eat say, 3 or 4 plates of food, then go and fill up another 5, leave them all full on the table and claim the food was all disgusting and refuse to pay. There was one time in particular when a couple tried to do this. The managers got involved and were refusing to let the customers leave whilst they called the police. The woman and the couple tried to push past one of my managers and he took hold of her arm to stop her leaving. Q shouts of assault and harassment, and male partner suddenly going ape crap shouting, don't you freaking touch my woman etc. Luckily there was a full restaurant of people who were watching the show so they couldn't get away with it. Doucher bags. There's a reason most eat all you want is paid for in advance. I was a hostess at a fairly popular restaurant close to a movie theater. This can attract some large families on busy nights, so we strongly suggest reservations in our advertising. It's a Friday evening and we're already on a wait. This family of 7 saunters in, and the father asks us for a table. I tell him that we do have about a 40 minute wait, but if they'd like to wait on the patio and order an appetizer, there is space for them. He frowns, whispers to his wife, then turns back to me. Nah, we're going somewhere else. Go frick yourself. I almost didn't believe I had heard it at first. Seriously? I was blown away that this father, husband, adult fricking man felt like it was okay to say that to a 20 year old hostess. What? Just take solace in the fact that he had to pile his crappy family back into the crappy van and go to some other restaurant. Afterwards returning to his crappy life. A few years ago, I worked at a pizza place with a dining area, though I wasn't a waitress. I just took orders at the counter and brought out the food. One night we had a group of 15 people come in as a party, and every single one of them was deaf. This particular group was the most obnoxious, self-entitled, rude crowd of people I have ever dealt with. They all acted as if they hated me from the moment they walked in the door, so that was awesome to start out with. Almost every single one of them was completely deaf, yet wanted to communicate their orders verbally. Now, I have nothing against that, but they would blatantly look away when I would try to repeat their order to make sure it was right, and then they would send it back to the kitchen blaming me for getting it wrong. Or if they did acknowledge me while they were ordering, they would get extremely frustrated while I was repeating the order, as if I were mocking them in some way. But not only did they not tip, not terribly important considering I was paid hourly, but it's the norm for big groups. But the youngest of the group knocked over two cups of water as they were leaving and just looked at them while he was walking away. Not a single frick given. Four out of the fifteen had their meals camped for being incorrect, and the others just chose to make that night hack for me. 
Having a disability isn't a get out of jail free card for being a douchebag. I've been stiffed before by people who don't tell me they have an allergy or a religious exemption from eating certain foods and then are incensed when it shows up in their order. It's an Italian place so I guess I can kind of understand when someone doesn't realize that chorizo, pancetta or prosciutto are pork products but why the f are you punishing me for not looking at you and going, oh, you're kosher Jew Muslim, were you aware that pancetta is actually very similar to bacon? Do you want me to leave that out? Pretty sure that profiling would get me canned in a heartbeat. I worked as a server at an organic restaurant. We were known for being vegan friendly, wheat free and willing to accommodate individuals special dietary needs. One day a man and his family came in for dinner. He came up to the counter to order and he told me he had a few allergies. I told him that was fine, because we are used to accommodating allergies. Then I asked him what he was allergic to. You might want to grab a pen was his response. This man was allergic to 11 major food groupings including all peanuts, tree nuts and pine nuts, all shellfish and seafood, dairy, lentils and peas and well as wheat. I couldn't believe it. I grabbed a cook from the kitchen and brought him out to talk to the customer because I didn't even know what to offer him. I understand that allergies suck. But cross-contamination is so common in restaurants that someone whose life could be threatened by and number of common foods should maybe stay in to eat. The story ends as the customer orders and eats steak and cooked quinoa. I stood within arm's reach of the phone his entire stay just in case I had to call emergency services. While getting ready to close up for the night at Subway, a guy came up to the counter, pointed a gun at me and told me to put all of the money from the register into a plastic bag. He was my least favorite customer. I used to work part time at a butcher shop. Woman would come in every Saturday and demand 30 chicken drumsticks. Seems simple enough. Number. She demanded they weigh up exactly the nearest kilogram. She'd be there for like half an hour waiting. Watching the poor cashier to find larger and smaller drumsticks to equal up exactly to the nearest kilogram. All that for $7 in the register. I'm so, so glad I no longer have to see her face, since I quit. I used to work fast food. We would regularly have people from construction crews come in and one person would usually end up ordering for the entire group. Anywhere from 5 to 20 people. Often. These guys wouldn't speak English so they'd come in the store and we'd bust out the picture menu for them and things would go pretty smooth. Every once in a while though, these guys would decide to come through the drive through and that was always an ordeal. If you've ever tried to take an order from someone who doesn't speak English, who is ordering for 15 people, and is talking through a drive through speak, you'll realize it is one of the most frustrating experiences there is. One day, this guy was trying to order and just kept yelling 244 over and over and over. At first I thought he was ordering a number 2 meal and 2 number 4 meals. Apparently not. He got more emphatic with his shouting. So I looked through the menu and found an item priced at $2.44 and thought that might be what he wanted. Wrong again. He yelled for a few minutes more, and then just started going off on me in Spanish. And meanwhile, I'm yelling back, all through the drive through speaker, I don't speak Spanish. I don't know what you want. Come order inside. After a few minutes of this, I realize it's not going anywhere and start helping other customers. He eventually gives up and decides to come inside, but not to order. Oh no, it's too late for that. This guy comes in irate and is yelling and screaming profanity at everyone behind the counter. Funny thing is he was cussing and yelling at us in English when he came inside. Oh you speak English now all of a sudden frick you man. Two older couples came in. For the sake of clarity, I will call the two women nice wife and be wife. I knew the table was going to be difficult when B-Wife presented me with a handful of coupons. I explained that I could only take one coupon per ticket, as was printed on the coupons themselves. B-Wife threw two coupons at me and said split our checks. Then, she told nice wife they could just pay two separate checks. Whatever, people do that all the time. B-Wife proceeded to drink the wars on the rocks until she was extremely intoxicated. When she ordered her steak she asked me to have it cooked blue, she flipped out when I told her we didn't do blue steaks and she instead ordered a very rare steak. Her husband ordered salmon, 
I was given very specific instructions on how to cook both entrees. Nice husband and nice wife look mortified. B wife gets her food and promptly flips out because it's not blue, even though she was totally clear on the fact that we didn't do that at the restaurant. My manager, an experienced chef, goes out of his way to make the woman a damned blue steak and serves it to her himself. It is the third steak we have cooked for her. B wife lectures me for 10 minutes, I am not exaggerating on what a terrible server I am, how the restaurant is a piece of crap, etc. She eats all of her steak and half of her husband's salmon and complains that their food was inedible. She demands that their entrees be taken off their bill. I am fuming at this point, but the manager still comps their meals. I take the check to the table for nice wife and nice husband to pay. I am lectured again about what terrible service I offered. After another 10 minutes of being scolded, I calmly told her that I understood she was upset, but that I didn't prepare her food and had served her exactly what she ordered. B wife demands to see the manager who cooked her food. She also lectures him and says that she is a professional chef and is appalled at our inability to prepare a blue steak. Manager offers her a job at the restaurant since we obviously don't know what I'm doing. B wife flies off the handle and storms out. Her husband follows meekly in her wake. Nice wife and nice husband leave me an immense tip. They're so embarrassed by their friend's behavior that they can barely look me in the eye. They leave and I start cleaning their table. Nice wife comes back, presses an additional $20 into my hand, and whispers I'm so sorry about the way she acted. If I'd known she would be that way I would have just fed her at my home. But she's a chef and I don't know how to cook. She gives me a hug and leaves. A few weeks later, B wife came back and got super drunk on wars on the rocks again. She ended up standing on her tiptoes screaming into the manager's face in the middle of a packed dining room because there wasn't cottage cheese on the salad bar. She was banned from the restaurant. What kills me is you just know people like that go through life thinking they're the victim and that they're constantly surrounded by incompetent idiots. It never occurs to them that the common denominator in all those situations is them. Totally feel your pain. I was about 6 months to my first job waiting tables at a brand new country club. It was the club's first valentine's dinner and we were doing this 4 course slash 2 choice thing to simplify everything as we were completely booked in advance. I had been given a pretty good sized section with 12 top and a few 6s and 4s when suddenly I hear that one of the other waiters up and quit an hour into service. Turns out he had this big plan to propose to his girlfriend, but the manager didn't seat her and her family in his section so, guess who got his tables clear on the other side of the restaurant? It was crazy. They underestimated the amount of time people needed to eat and move on so the second and third sets of tables had been waiting to be seated about 45 minutes to an hour and were already pee. My second 12 top was seated and we started to run out of some of the course choices. The icing on the cake was that half of the couples only spoke German. I lived in an area that was 90% Hispanic so Spanish or English I was cool but honestly, I think those were the first full on Germans I'd ever met in my life. I fully admit that it took a while to get their food out. The kitchen was deep in the weeds and I had 7 other tables, but I was very apologetic and focused most of my attention on them. I could tell they were frustrated by the wait time and the fact that I couldn't effectively communicate with half of the couples. After dinner was complete, one of the English speaking gentlemen took the time to tell me in front of the whole table that I was the worst waiter he had ever had and that it was sad that I couldn't do something so simple correctly. He went on to say that I should find another line of work. All I could say to him was I was sorry for everything and that I was sorry he felt that way. As they left, another gentleman who had been to the club pulled me aside and apologized for what his friend said to me. He said it was obvious the problems they experienced were beyond my control and he saw that I did everything I could to make up for it. It really turned me around. But the previous comments were some of the most humiliating things a person has ever said to me. Just for your information, I never go out to a restaurant on Valentine's Day after that night. I have went out to dinner once on Valentine's Day. Frick that crap. I'll stay home and make my girl a meal this next time. I waitressed in high school. This happened when I was 16 or 17. A guy came in to eat with his family, a little girl and his pregnant wife. They were really really friendly and at first I thought it was a great table. The wife went to the bathroom and the guy asked for the check, and on the check he wrote his phone number in the tip area along with call me baby. I ran his card, 
waited until his wife came back, and brought over the guy's card and his receipt. I handed the receipt to the pregnant woman and told her something was wrong with the tip. She got super upset and I got in a lot of trouble with my managers for stirring crap. Like, in retrospect, I probably didn't handle that the best way, but at the same time I was freaking furious that some guy would come to eat with his pregnant wife. They were both wearing wedding bands, acting couple Y, 99% positive they were married. Pretty much 100% confirmed when I gave the wife the receipt with the guy's tip on it, and tried to hit on a girl half his age. WTF. WTF. If he's pulling that crap so brazenly, god knows what else he's doing behind his wife's back. It sounds like you did her a favor. We had a waitress run into the kitchen bawling her eyes out. It took us a few minutes to find out what had happened from her. Apparently, a customer kept telling his son what he wanted, and the son would tell this waitress. When pressed by the waitress why he would not speak to her directly, he told his son to tell her, I don't talk to N. We chased the sucker out of the place, myself, and two cooks. We wanted to roll him, but he was pretty quick. A couple orders food together. Man gets a plain hamburger and the female gets a hamburger ketchup only. They come back up together and the man says he ordered it plain but got ketchup and the girl says she wanted ketchup but got a hamburger plain. I still don't know if they were trolling but all I could do was gesture for them to switch hamburgers as I was dumbfounded. Please tell me you saw the light bulb go on when you gestured to them. Used to work at McDonald's during high school. You really see all kinds come through there. A couple of stories come to mind. 1. Lady comes through the drive through and orders 3 large chocolate shakes. It's a pretty rainy day out. Relevant. I fill the order and pass it to my manager who happened to be working the window at the time. The lady rolls her window down about 6 inches and extends a hand to take the shakes. My manager points out that the cups are pretty tall, and she'll have to roll her window down all the way so that they fit. He insists, rather loudly, that it's fine because she doesn't want to get wet. Never mind that there is a little roof over the window, sheltering it from the rain. She takes the first shake, rotates it about 70 degrees, and puts it in her car. She repeats this process for the second one, except she smashed the lid against the window in the process. Of course, the crappy plastic lid popped off, spilling shake all down the side of her car, both on the inside and the outside. She flipped out, yelling at my manager about how he didn't put the lid on all the way, calling him stupid and all sorts of other crap. He hands her a big stack of napkins, puts on his best smile, apologizes, and makes her a new shake. She got way better than she deserved. 2. Lady comes through the drive through at 12.15 on a Saturday. Pretty much the busiest time there was at our store. She orders about $20 worth of food, and pulls around to the window. The cashier gives her total, and the lady hands her a big bag of unrolled coins, saying something like I think it's all there. The cashier calls the manager, who politely tells the lady that we're very busy and can't count out all of these coins right now. He asks her to pull off to the side so that the people behind her can get through while we count out the change. The lady loses her mind, and starts bitching about how she was there first, and everyone else can wait until she is served. She again assures us that all of the money is there, and is angry that we won't just accept her giant bag of coins as payment without counting it first. That reminds me of when I used to deliver pizza. Another driver delivered this guy his pizza. Guy was a total shut-in and couldn't or wouldn't open his door more than a crack. Delivery guy balks but the guy insists. So he turns the pizza on its side and hands it through the crack. The sure enough, guy calls to complain that all my toppings are smooshed onto one side. No crap buddy. Physics. My girlfriend and I worked at the same restaurant in Savannah, GA while in college. Saint Patrick's Day is huge here. About 750,000 people come every year and get very, very drunk. One year an intoxicated customer didn't like his Reuben, and proceeded to grab my girlfriend, his waitress, and literally rub it in her face. Myself, a bartender, and a bouncer literally tossed him out the front door. That's the least of what I would do if some sucker did that to my girlfriend. Customer, I got home with my order from the drive through and realized I'm missing my McBurger. Me, oh, I'm sorry about that. Just let me see your receipt. Looks like you weren't charged for it. That explains it. Let me just ring it up and get you on your way.
customer, but I want it free, I ordered it, me, but, you didn't pay for anything, customer, you should give it to me free, me, number. I worked at Tim Hortons, one day a 60 year old woman came into my line while I was working the cash register, I could tell something was off about her, and my suspicions were confirmed when she started telling me about her horrendous childhood. She took out her cell phone and showed me a picture of herself at 2 years old, then proceeded to ask me if I could abandon that little girl if I tried to. My co-workers and I are WTFing and we just get her the order and out of line. Then she comes back up when another customer is ordering, cuts in front of them and proceeds to tell me how her father molested her too. Luckily my manager saw what was going on and sent me to the back to wash dishes and he dealt with the woman. One of the saddest and most unexpected things I've ever experienced. Tim Hortons are the worst. I was on soup and sandwich one day and a woman, who turned out to be my neighbor, sent back a bagel four times. 1. Too much butter. 2. Not enough butter. 3. Not toasted enough. 4. Too toasted. And then we ran out of her bagel so she complained to the manager. Luckily the manager was really nice about it and told me that she does this a few times a month. I used to work at Starbucks. My store was by the beach. And very busy in summer. You could wait in the register line for up to a half hour or even 45 minutes. It's not like we were dicking around back there. Just that busy. So... The thing about Starbucks is, people forget that the line to wait for the drinks is going to be a while too. You still are going to wait for a bit even after the register. All of a sudden, you waited in line for 30 minutes, and your drink is supposed to be done lickety split. We had a party of several high school age girls getting us, and they'd waited in line for a while to get them. So they were pissy. This one chick in particular was acting like an entitled little C, riding me and watching me like a hawk while I made these drinks, asking me if each next drink was hers. Finally I told her something like I'm going as fast as I can, we're very busy, your drink will be out as soon as possible. Her father heard me say that and decided I was being sassy, I really wasn't, and threatened violence. It never came to that, I ignored the prick just like I ignored his daughter, made the drink in order and gave it to them, but Jesus Christ, threatening to punch some 19 year old kid that's half your size over the weight for a frappuccino? First, world, problems. I worked as a waitress through college, and it was pretty awful. My state allows servers to not be paid minimum wage provided their tips make up for it. My restaurant was so crooked that, looking back, pretty sure that it didn't matter. The worst customers ever were the Kansas City Chiefs. I recall them taking over the place, ordering the entire menu, being creepily flirty, and pretty much demanding that we all bend over backwards for them because they were an NFL team. What made that even worse was them trying to exempt themselves from a rule that we had on the menu, tables of 8 or more had an automatic 18% gratuity added, which is pretty standard. Keep in mind, this was nearly the whole team, plus a few wags. The reason why they figured they shouldn't have to pay the 18% gratuity? They said they never found out their servers names. We wore name tags, they were calling us by name the whole time, and we personally wrote it on their bill with our little thank you for eating here blurb. It was unbelievable, or believable depending on your views about pro athletes and their attitudes. In any case, it was an are you kidding me moment. They weren't successful in getting out of the tip but I still root for whoever is playing against them. Years ago I was waitressing at a restaurant at an event where members of the Saint, Louis Rams showed up and acted in the manner you described. Disgusting. Conversely, I have witnessed nothing but great attitudes treatment from our local NHL players. Had a woman shouting over the entire restaurant over how my BBQ chicken wings were crap after she ate all 12 of them, leaving nothing but the bones. She also commented on the bad smell of the sauce. It's full of blue cheese you idiot. What did you expect? She also didn't like my pasta carbonara that her date was eating. He gestured it was good but didn't want to add to the scene. Luckily there were only 4 other customers present. She was a semi-regular. Claimed to know the owner and what not. That made it all the more fun when she was demanding a discount. The waiters refused to take her money and she was perma banned from the restaurant. While working at Subway I had two older ladies come in and tell me how much of a nice young man I was, 
and how it was so refreshing to have a fast food employee be so sociable. This ultimately led to the conversation this must be a summer job while you're in college, right I answered yes and told them that I just finished my sophomore year as an engineering major at Penn State. This led to a 10 minute session of them screaming at me, claiming that I was a terrible person who supports child molestation. They literally told me I was no better than Jerry Sandusky himself, and said they didn't know how I could live with myself. They told my manager they couldn't believe that she could work with someone like me. Wasn't I just the exceedingly nice young man? My manager told them in the nicest way possible that they could go frick themselves, and I never saw them again. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.